Good morning, I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Spring is in the air and so are the good smells of my spring recipes. Join me today because I'm cooking with the bounty of spring here on SoFlo Taste. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein in the Goya Kitchen at Junior Achievement of South Florida in Coconut Creek and welcome to SoFlo Taste. Spring is about to be sprung. This is a wonderful time of the year, a renewal of Good morning, I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Spring is in the air and so are the good smells of my spring recipes. Join me today because I'm cooking with the bounty of spring here on SoFlo Taste. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein in the Goya Kitchen at Junior Achievement of South Florida in Coconut Creek and welcome to SoFlo Taste. Spring is about to be sprung. This is a wonderful time of the year, a renewal of life, and I'm getting much older this month, by the way, including the spring bounty of food. So today I thought it would be fun to give you some recipes that will herald the coming of spring. So let's get cooking. First thing I'm gonna do is just throw this salmon right in the oven so we can jump on the fun stuff. I have a little bit of ground fennel, which I ground myself, but of course you can buy ground fennel if you're interested. A little bit of salt, some black pepper, a good drizzle of olive oil. This is some beautiful extra virgin oil that I love. And finally, a touch of lemon zest for freshness. Okay, let's pop it in the oven and then we can jump into the rest of the recipe. Okay, so I wanted to serve chunks of roast salmon with a nice stew. And the stew is some caramelized fennel that I already had to have started because caramelized fennel takes a little while. And so this has already been going for a good 10 to 12 minutes. As you can see, it is well caramelized already. So you really want the color to turn nice and caramelized because the fennel becomes so much sweeter like that. We're gonna add a little bit of finely chopped or minced shallots, and they just really need a minute to cook. I really love beans, and I love really good beans. I make a lot of beans at the house, but I couldn't find any gigante beans to cook. So, now you can use any of your favorite beans. I just happen to love gigantes, which means big in Spanish. Look how beautiful they are. They're so creamy, they're incredible. We're gonna add some chicken broth. 
or it can be fish broth or it can be vegetable broth. Then we're gonna add the gigantes to the pan. I thought it would be kind of fun to throw a little bit of saffron because I got the gigantes from Spain. We're gonna use lemon juice when it comes out of the oven, but I feel like we can throw in a little bit more zest. I know we put some on the salmon, but I'm just gonna add some more into here. I've got fresh thyme with me today. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove some of the leaves like so. Thyme can be a little strong, so you don't wanna go too crazy, especially with something as delicate as this broth and salmon. So let's go ahead and chop that a little bit more fine. And add these leaves into our reduction. I also brought along some beautiful fresh dill, which we're gonna go ahead and pick some of that because dill, to me, dill, fennel, and salmon are like the perfect marriage. So much great flavor, they match perfectly. So as you can see, this is coming together really nicely. It's becoming more stew-like now. Let's go ahead and season. If you have any like crushed chilies around, that would be really nice in here if you're in the mood for something spicy. I'm personally just gonna go with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna chop this dill just lightly. Add that in to the stew. And then finally add a little bit of lemon juice because the stew is almost done. All right, I think that's enough. All right, so we're gonna wait for this salmon to cook. This is gonna take a couple more minutes and we'll put it all together. So make sure you come right back. See you in a minute. Come back to SoFlo Taste from the Goya Kitchen at Junior Achievement of South Florida. SoFlo Home Project is next right here on Local 10. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. We're here at JA of South Florida in Coconut Creek, a wonderful and beautiful place committed to the education of our children. This 60,000 square foot interactive learning environment teaches students entrepreneurism, workplace readiness, and financial literacy. Visit jasouthflorida.org for more information or call 954-979-7100. They always make us feel right at home. Now back to the food. All right, everybody, we're talking spring. We are finishing our delicious dish of salmon with a fennel and bean stew. Fennel really kind of speaks to me as far as dishes that I wanna make in spring. So look at this beautiful stew. It has a touch of a hue of kind of a reddish color because of the saffron. Now I'm gonna do something I normally wouldn't do and I've been eating salmon a lot like this lately. I just kind of break it apart rather than cut it into perfect pieces. And I just like to kind of lay in chunks of salmon into my dish. Now this is how I love salmon cooked. This is about a medium. It still has a beautiful creaminess on the inside, a little underdone. So I cooked it on a very low temperature, like 300 to 325 degrees is all I really need because I didn't want it to get dry on the outside. I want it to stay really beautifully moist. So this is how I serve this. This is how I love to eat it with the beautiful chunks set inside of this gorgeous stew. And this is just ah, it's so good. It's really good eating. All right. We're not going to garnish it or make it even prettier than it is because I think it's perfect. Just so you know, this beautiful piece of salmon is from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. I know I talk about them a lot, but I get most of my products for them and I adore them. You have to see that they have every single kind of protein for your upcoming holiday meals. They're located at the southeast corner of 441 in Sterling. Go to DelawareChicken.com, call them at 954-983-6831, or just go and enjoy. They are such warm, wonderful people and they know so much about everything. They've got seafood specialists, duck, chicken, turkey specialists, absolutely everything. They're there to help you. Make sure you tell them Michelle sent you. Spring is also about kind of the end of citrus season, beginning of all these green vegetables. So I wanted to make sure I kept up with the citrus. So we're gonna make a lemony orecchietti, which are little ear pasta, with a beautiful creamy lemon and spinach sauce with Parmesan. 
Okay, we're gonna jump right in and it's not gonna be hard. It'll be really nice and simple. What I do, like I always do with pasta here on the show, I cook the pasta very al dente. If the box says 10 minutes, I go six and I toss the pasta after it's cold with a little bit of olive oil just so it doesn't stick. And then I always keep a pot of the starchy water on the side because all of my sauces, I can't think of any sauce that I make for pasta that doesn't involve starchy water. <laughs> I use it on everything and I love it. It makes things come together. So let's start out with this beautiful pasta dish with a little bit of butter and a little bit of oil because I love starting my pasta sauces with both butter and oil. So I've got just about a tablespoon of butter, tablespoon of olive oil. I'm gonna go ahead and add some nice finely minced shallots. Minced garlic, some red crushed chili flake, a whole lot of lemon zest. And I took this from three lemons. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of this starchy water first because that will be the base of my sauce. And again, starchy water makes things come together. It has the starchiness of the pasta in it, right? So what that does is it, it helps to make things creamy. It helps to make things a little tighter without adding too much fat or anything else really. So let this all come together. I've got here some baby spinach that I always keep in nice kind of moist uh, paper towels in my fridge. It keeps things nice and fresh that way. And I have some beautiful herbs from my own personal garden, which again, I keep in moist paper towels in my fridge. And this is just some parsley and some dill. I'm gonna be a little lazy and I'm not gonna pick the leaves off. I'm just gonna cut it as it is. It's nice and clean. And I don't mind having a little bit of stem. So we're not gonna go in a very fine chop. We're just gonna do nice and rough like so. So as I shake, as you can see, it's becoming more viscous. And as it becomes more viscous, it's really turning into a beautiful creamy sauce. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add some heavy cream. And this is just gonna soften the lemon flavor. And it's also just gonna make it ridiculously delicious. I have a good amount of Reggiano Parmigiano already grated here. The next thing we need to add is a nice amount of ground black pepper. I haven't had any salt, added any salt yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some kosher salt. Now, as this starts coming together, remember, my pasta is very, very al dente, which means it still needs a, just a couple minutes more to cook. So as this sauce just starts, what I'm looking for is the whole thing to bubble up. Center as well. There we go. All right, so the whole thing is starting to bubble up. What I wanna do is, the next part is gonna be really quick. So I wanna taste it. Mmm, it's a little spicy, lemony, yum. So let's go ahead and add horekieti to the pan. Remember, horekieti does have a little oil on it because I tossed it in the oil so that it didn't stick. So that might be enough of my fat that I don't have to add any more butter. Yeah, it looks good to me. All right. Now I'm gonna start adding the spinach. Basically, I'm adding as much spinach as I can, not to overfill the pan, but so that it has enough of that green in it. To me, the spinach is actually my favorite part of it. I fish out the spinach as I'm eating. Now you always wanna keep this pasta water until you're done cooking, because you might have to add a little bit more in to keep cooking the spinach and keeping this nice and juicy. So I'm just gonna add a touch more of the water. I'm also gonna add my herbs, the dill and the parsley. By the way, it's Italian parsley. I try to always use Italian parsley in pasta dishes and things like this where the herb needs to be a little more delicate. Curly parsley, I love it for sauces because it's nice and coarse. This is looking pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and keep cooking it until the spinach just cooks through. 
I'll add another handful, some Parmesan when you come back. Let's see what that looks like. So come right back for more SoFlo Taste, only on Channel 10. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to the SoFlo Taste. As you should know by now, all of my recipes are available on the SoFlo Shows webpage. Just scan this quick response code for a quick trip to the informative SoFlo Shows page. With SoFlo Home Project and SoFlo Health there too, you'll also see this QR code on the ingredient list throughout the show. Now back to my spring fling. All right, everybody, this pasta is looking pretty delicious. So I'm going to add uh, the rest of the Parmesan cheese to it and a little, little, it's like begging me for a tiny little bit of squeeze of lemon. I don't want to go too crazy with it, so I'm not going to make it like too high in lemon, but I think that'll just do it for me. So all the herbs are in there, remember, that I put in there and the chilies and the spinach and the pasta and the starchy water and the cream. So let's go ahead and serve ourselves a little bit. The spinach has cooked through and it's beautiful and it's all kind of intermingled with the orecchietti. And there you have it. Look how beautiful that is. So yummy. And to me, it just says spring. So speaking of spring, you know it's strawberry season and I couldn't go without making at least one dish with strawberries today. So I was playing around with some strawberries that um, we actually picked recently and I decided to make a strawberry vinegar. And I really had this like fancy way that I thought I was gonna make it. I was all wrong. I really wanted to make a beautiful rustic strawberry vinaigrette. So here are a lot of strawberries just kind of cut up. I'm gonna add them to a saucepan. I've got white balsamic vinegar. If y'all haven't heard of it, you should try it. It's so yummy. White balsamic, I know it's not really white, but it's not that kind of dark color balsamic that we're used to. And it's really yummy. It's very kind of delicate and soft in acidity. It has a low acidity level. And then finally, the tiniest bit of brown sugar to kind of balance the whole thing out. So you basically bring that up to a boil, reduce it down to the lowest setting your stove will go to, and just kind of let it sit there. And once it kind of gets all kind of mashed up, and looks like this. It looks almost like jam. Shut it off and let it cool. And now you have a beautiful strawberry vinegar. If you wanna be fancy, like I really thought I was gonna be fancy, you can go ahead and strain that so you don't have pieces of strawberry and seeds. But why not have it in there? I mean, it's so delicious and beautiful and surprise someone with this gorgeous kind of shiny strawberry mixture going through your salad. So we have to make a vinaigrette with this. Do we want to add oil to all of this beautiful strawberry vinegar and then throw it in our fridge? No, I don't think so. So what you'll, we'll do is we're going to make the vinaigrette into the bowl, adding a little bit of oil in the vinegar. To choose what you want to serve with your strawberry vinegar, I actually grow my own watercress. I love watercress. Of course, you can buy it anywhere as well. And this is normally, if you're going to buy it, this is how it would come, either if you pick it or you buy it. Just pick the watercress like so. I don't just pick the leaf, I pick a little bit of the stem as well because it's nice and crunchy and spicy. So that's how you clean the watercress and I have cleaned watercress right here. So let's start with that in my mixing bowl. I also have some gorgeous Easter egg radishes. Those are these beautiful different colored radishes. They, they're called Easter egg I guess because of the colors. They're simple round radishes but they're delicious and they're multicolored. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna use a mandolin and go ahead and mandolin or slice with a, a knife. All right, I'll do one more. All right, so that's good. The next vegetable I thought would be really nice is a pea. Now, peas are very, obviously, they say spring to me all over the place. So I thought a little snap pea would be yummy. Now. As much as I do like them raw, I like them better just a little bit cooked. So these are cooked in salted water for just about 30 seconds and then placed in ice water to stop the cooking process. They can be whole, they can be cut in half. I love finding these in a salad. They're crunchy, they're sweet, they're delicious. It's just kind of a fun find for texture. Next, I grow a lot of herbs and as you can see, 
These definitely came from my garden as well because I let some of my tarragon flower because I love the flowers. I also have some of my dill here and a little bit of parsley as well. So I'm just gonna pick some random herbs. You want soft herbs in salad. Herbs like these are just delicious. So I love dill in a salad. Tarragon is really one of my favorite. And I throw the flowers in there as well. Next, I've got some pickled red onions. Now we make these a lot. It's basically just onions that are sliced thin, pour a little bit of vinegar over them, and then put them over ice, and they're done. So softens the flavor of the onion quite a bit. Lastly, I brought a little bit of feta along with me today. I thought that that really yummy saltiness would be delicious for the strawberry salad. So when you come back, we're gonna put all these things together and make a delicious and beautiful, very, very, very springtime salad for y'all. Come right back, Taste Buds. Stay tuned to SoFlo Taste. We'll be right back. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. I have this delicious salad in this bowl and I'm gonna make a vinaigrette into the bowl because I've made a strawberry balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna drizzle just a little bit of oil into the salad, some kosher salt, some black pepper, which by the way would really be yummy inside of this strawberry balsamic as well. Now we're gonna add this gorgeous vinegar we made and kept our strawberries in it. And it's not strong because we've used white balsamic and a little brown sugar to soften and then the strawberries take it even further. So let's mix that together. So pretty. And I'll serve it. Actually, I'll serve it in front so that y'all can see me doing it. And check out the strawberries. You can't even tell what they are until you probably bite into them. They're just so beautiful. Got those crunchy snap peas to make it a little bit more interesting pickled onions, which are ingredients that just work so beautifully together. Top it off with some more radishes. And then finally, a little bit of this crumbled feta will really take it to a whole other level. And there you have it, just this beautiful springtime salad. I can't think of anything more delicious to eat right now. So with spring in the air, I hope you try these recipes. They may just get you into a springtime mood. Next week, I'm hopping down the bunny trail with a menu for Easter, perfect for sharing with family and friends. From your own spiral cut ham entree to mom's carrot cake dessert that I miss, I've got it all on the next SoFlo Taste. Time to check in now with our design expert, Elena Capra, host of SoFlo Home Project. Good morning, Elena. What have you got for us coming up? Hi, Michelle. Good morning. So in design, sometimes it's about going bold and colorful, and other times, it's about keeping things neutral. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we tour a beautiful condo designed with that perfect balance between light and dark tones. Okay, Elena, we'll be watching. I could sure use some oomph in my house. So taste buds again. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next week. Goodbye and good taste.